There is no question about the skill and the bravery of those who fight wildfires. We've been reminded this week how volatile the flames and the wind can be. Firefighters have a range of tactics and tools, of course. In the case of Fort McMurray, though, it wasn't enough. Eric Sorensen looks at what they had and whether anything could have been done differently. Much of Fort McMurray is gone. Could more have been done? The fire grew quickly, moved erratically. In the first hours, there just wasn't enough equipment to respond. We can provide lots of firefighters, but firefighters are no good unless they have equipment to operate. And uh, there, there is a limit to what we have here. More resources are coming from across Canada and the United States. Heavy equipment, helicopters, air tankers. There are now 22 air tankers in Alberta. An air tanker can drop more than 11,000 litres of fire retardant in one pass. But it can't hold back a fire that grows 750% in one day. But let me be clear, air tankers are not going to stop this fire. This fire is an extreme fire event. It's going to continue to push through these dry conditions until we actually get some significant rain to help us. On April 5th, there were few fires and little risk in Alberta. One month later, Alberta and Saskatchewan are almost entirely at extreme risk with dozens of active fires caused by a dry spring, windy weather and fuel. The fuel is the forest itself, the timberland. Fort McMurray is literally surrounded by wood. Neighborhoods like Abbasand, Beacon Hill and Waterways and others were at greater risk than anyone realized. Built next to a massive storehouse of fuel that nature can eventually burn. It's basically fuel, topography, weather. Fires are uh, a product of, of the environment in which they're burning. A wildfire that burned so large, so quickly, Fort McMurray didn't have a chance. The usual fire breaks, the Athabasca River or four-lane highways, were no match for a fire like this. As you get closer to an urban environment, it's the burning embers that can move ahead of the fire across the fire breaks. Jim Sales cut his teeth fighting fires in Alberta. Something like the Fort McMurray fire where you've got so many hectares of uh, timberland and, and forest, it becomes very, very difficult. It's a cautionary tale for any northern Canadian community close to woodlands in a global climate that is getting warmer. Eric Sorensen, Global News, Toronto.